Hey everyone, citizen of the future here. I hope everyone's doing fantastic and ready to get some knowledge here. So today's piece, uh, to piecing together the next generation financial system, I wanted to talk about the difference between cryptocurrency and blockchain. What are the two definitions and give you guys some insight into the difference between the two terms because there's a retail terminology which is cryptocurrencies and then there's the regulated fintech side which is the term that they use is blockchain because that's the fundamental technology behind DLT and blockchain. So I'm going to review this thread that I created for everyone that you guys can send around use as educational information if you know somebody that doesn't know what the difference is or doesn't know about blockchain then i created this thread to interest people in why they should research blockchain and dlt because if you didn't know we're going through a blockchain revolution and uh, there are some exciting things to come over these next few years before we get started here i just want to read a disclaimer that None of this is financial advice. I'm not paid to create any of this, but the reason I create my content is because I see a lack of good factual information out there around regulated blockchain networks. You know, we see all this hype stuff, we see all this price prediction stuff, we see all this shit coin and meme coin pump and dump stuff that's just sucking people in. And uh, I want to create regulated content that people can start learning about and see what is actually going on in the traditional finance space and how they're using these technologies. So I just want to give you another quick reminder that most of this is re regulated information. I use trade finance and banking documents all for citations and uh, so it might be dry in some parts. So this is for people that are actually wanting to deep learn into the blockchain space. Okay, so let's get started, people. Everyone knows the term cryptocurrency, but few understand what blockchain technology is and how it's revolutionizing industries across the globe. A list of information on why you should research blockchain technology. So first things first, blockchain is the underlying technology that cryptocurrencies are built upon. Yes, it's more than a digital currency. There's many different use cases to blockchain. So DLT is another word for blockchain, which is distributed ledger technology. And it provides an immutable digital ledger that is always updating with transactions and happening in real time. So I'm going to show you a info, infograph here. Properties of DLT. So when a transaction goes on, it's recorded to this global ledger and it's immutable. There is no changing. Once a transaction is made, the transaction is made. It's time-stamped and tracked on a blockchain for, for life. You got anonymous, we got uh, anonymity, where public uh, addresses are just numbers and letters, so you can't tell who that person is making that transaction. So secure, all files are individually encrypted. Uh, which is huge so we're now going from an internet of information which is what we have is the web to where we are able to move value safely using these encrypted blockchain networks so now we're going from an internet of information to an internet of value where we can move value like we can moving information in an email uh, and such and the crazy thing about uh, DLT is these are program it's programmable money so we can have smart contracts we can have automation and we can set you know how many tokens we want to create etc etc there's it's you could set expiry on currencies so say for example if the government was to hand out money they could set an expiry date for when that CBD that central bank digital currency would expire they could set spending limits so if they give out money then you can only spend it on gasoline food necessities instead of going and blowing it on booze and drugs so i'm just going to get to the next thing here 
So what is DLT? So DLT allows for decentralized processing, validation, and authentication of transactions. DLT has several unique and valuable characteristics that over time could transform a wide range of industries. So DLT is a type of database that is spread across multiple sites. So multiple nodes across the world all have this ledger of transactions that's always updating in real time. It is decentralized in nature, eliminating the need for intermediary to process, validate, and authenticate transactions. Each party, individual, organization, or group is represented by their computer, called a node, on the network. Each node keeps its own copy of all transactions on the network, and nodes work directly with one another to check a new transaction's validity through the process called consensus. Each of these transactions is encrypted and sent to every node on the network to be verified and grouped into timestamp blocks of transactions. Blockchain is one such type of distributed ledger that has gained notoriety as the core technology behind Bitcoin. So when you guys talk about cryptocurrencies, you're actually talking about the retail name for blockchain networks, the tokens of blockchain networks. Okay, so now let's move on. So what are the benefits to blockchain or DLT? So I got found some really awesome infographics through my years of research and uh, seeing this stuff. So for example, advantages of blockchain. So this was from Mike Quindazzi. So he, he's just some uh, influencer that actually posted this. I thought this was a great way to explain what it's like. So blockchain, you know, you got your consensus mechanism, so how nodes verify transactions, and they're programmable, distributed, transparent. So right with blockchain networks, we see all the wallets in that network that's open source. So you could see all the whole the top holders, how much uh, tokens they have in their wallets. Uh, we got encrypted security that um, is unhackable for most of the good networks. Uh, and it's immutable. So when you have a transaction and it's done, it's done. There is no chargebacks. Uh, it removes the trust for intermediaries. So it removes that third party where you have to go right now. If you just have a bank account and you want to send money to Japan, you got to go to your bank. You got to say, hey, I want to send $100 to Japan. Then they verify. They say, okay, they sent, they, they put a transaction through. It takes five to seven business days and you don't know when it actually gets there because there's no end-to-end -end tracking at the current legacy banking infrastructure. So, but with blockchain, you open up your phone, you type in their address, you get end-to-end -end tracking, it settles within four seconds and it costs a fraction of a cent. So inefficiencies in maintaining the integrity of data, so it's just like makes things in, uh, efficient, uh, threats of, information security so like it's secure there's no threats um, information is secured using so all information is secured using cryptography which is the coding behind these networks um, only pertinent information is shared the rest remains encrypted and inaccessible so right like a public's eye only sees the public uh, ID. They don't see anything deeper on who it's going to, like the names, bank account numbers, it's all privatized. Data is stored over a democratized network. So, right, like when you make an XRP transaction or an XTC net transaction, that's stored on the network, that's a global network, a global ledger of transactions. Okay, so let's see. So immutable real-time settlement. So DLT allows for real-time settlement of transactions. So this is huge because if you don't know about the current legacy system, correspondent banking is slow, friction, expensive. Um, there's manual processes that cost banks billions of dollars a year. And uh, it's just junk. And this is trustless. So we're now talking about 
a trustless system. When we use a blockchain network, we have tr we have a trustless system that allows two people to have a contract be settled between them without having to trust uh, an intermediary. And how does that work? Through smart contracts. A smart contract is when two people agree to a contract and they both uh, agree and both sides are met, then it's automatically executed and swapped so uh, each person gets what they wanted. So key value drivers for the identification of appropriate DLT use cases. Operational simplification, so this is simplifying processes. Regulatory efficiency improvement, so now this is giving uh, regulators a ledger that they can audit. A complete auditable ledger of every transaction that happens and if you know what, if you get flagged for money laundering, they can pull up your account and they'll be able to track all the money and where it came from and where it got sent to. So this is where they're coming out with, in this world of digitalization, everything will be traceable and trackable, no matter what. It's just what is happening and that's, that's life. Counterparty risk reduction. So it's removing uh, the risk between uh, obligations so DLT challenges the need to trust counterparties because we can now I could trust a random person in Japan to enter a smart contract and we both get what we wanted without actually having to trust somebody clearing and settlement time reduction DLT disintermediates third parties that support transactions verifications and validation and accelerates settlement so now we're going from five to seven business days to settle one transaction cross borders to four seconds settlement and it costs a fraction of a cent compared to $50. Micropayments is happening. This is huge. Liquidity and capital improvement. DLT reduces locked up, locked in capital and provides transparency into sourcing liquidity for assets. So the current legacy system has liquidity problems because when you're transferring value, like Across the world, there's these Nostro and Vostro accounts. And what those are, are storing accounts for banks. So when they're sending a million dollars, $10 million from here to Japan, it, it goes into a Nostro and Vostro account and sits there until the money is settled on the other side. So you have trillions of dollars in the global system trapped in these Nostro and Vostro accounts that are gaining 0% interest in doing anything. So you have all these companies that have trillions of dollars globally, like I'm talking about the whole worldwide system, is locked into this account to solve the double spend problem. But if you come out with real-time gross settlement, where it settles in real time, that eliminates that trapped capital. So now you can unlock trillions of dollars that can be put to work 24-7 because we no longer have to sit that in an account waiting for clearance. DLT also enables provenance and full transaction history to be established within a single source of truth. So it's just saying that it, it reduces fraud because now you're gonna, you're, you're gonna get these systems in trade finance and the banking system where you know your, your blockchain ID is attached to your ID, stuff like that, and it just eliminates fraud. Okay, let's go down. This one's a fun one, I love to talk about this. What are some industries that are being revolutionized by DLT? Digitalized securities and derivatives. So right now, current banking system, anytime you sell a stock, you're paying 10 to $15. Uh, it takes two days to get to your bank account. It's slow, it's broken, you can't trade 24 seven. It's hilarious, stocks, why can't we trade it 24 seven? It should be 24 seven. Uh, supply chain shipping and tracking. So supply chain is really being revolutionized by DLT because one, uh, there's the SME gap, small medium enterprise gap, which is a lack of funding. It, the ICC put out a document saying that the, the trade finance gap is currently around $5 trillion to get back to pre-COVID times. And that is a lack of funding 
that small medium enterprises need to fund their businesses uh, to get loans to, to buy products and uh, what DLT is creating is tokenization for a lendable asset class so trade finance lending can be lent through a tokenized ecosystem where you know you're getting 8% for lending your money to this uh, tokenized ecosystem that's actually helping small medium enterprises across the globe it's also being revolutionized with smart contracts it's also being revolutionized with digital documents uh, if you guys look up a Nigio E N I G I O Nigio they use XDC network uh, as a digital document settlement mechanism in the back end of their system Healthcare and medical records, cross-border remittances, decentralized voting, trade finance, and many more. And, well, if you don't believe me, well, let's see. Goldman Sachs, asset management, blockchain technology has and may continue to revolutionize a score of industries. Faster settlement, anti-AML, anti-money laundering reinforcements, digital identity management. So they're coming out with digital IDs in Africa and all these third-party countries where they don't have people don't have IDs are gonna have a digital ID that will actually allow them to participate in global trade that's just it's a revol digitalization of everything is happening and blockchain is one of the the powers at the forefront of this revolution uh, so I'm gonna move to the next one here so this was from a Deloitte document that I found, trade finance, cross-border payments, digital ID, clearing and settlement, reassurance. So like insurance is another industry that's being revolutionized by smart contracts and DLT. Record keeping, it's all now being recorded on the blockchain, uh, provenance, and uh, multi-party aggregation. Which is just share it says it's just sharing data okay so now on to the next guys here so here's more proof that you know I got to get this across that this is actually happening but a lot of people don't believe it because mainstream media is, isn't talking about blockchain they talk about Bitcoin Ethereum and Dogecoin they talk about the ones in the limelight, they don't actually talk about the fundamental technology that's changing and revolutionizing industries globally. So, what are the technologies powering the fourth industrial revolutions? And these industries, these industries are important to follow. Why? Because their adoption rate is growing at an exponential rate, faster than the internet. And that is crazy. So this is just uh, technologies at the forefront. This is just uh, showing us what technologies you should be researching if you want to be a citizen of the future. If you want to get ahead of the curb, these are where you should be researching. Spend the hours. Put the time in now before the mainstream adoption comes. So DLT and blockchain, AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning, quantum commute, computing, uh, VR, virtual reality, Internet of Things. The IoT is revolutionizing the world and how devices talk to everyone. It is Everything's going to have a sensor. Everything's going to be able to interoperate with everything that's uh, connected to the Internet. Cloud computing, 5G, and biometrics. So here you go, take a picture, or well, I'm, I'm gonna put this thread in the, in, the, in the description. So you guys can go through this, you can read it, and just get, get more of the, the, the finer details of it. This is from the World Economic Forum. And this talks about the fourth industrial revolution. Everything that, this, that my account talks about is in this right here. You got tokenization and digital assets you got de decentralized governance and new models so this is from the world economic forum if you don't know who they are they are the ones pushing for the next revolution 
They're the ones pushing for the change and they are almost ahead of the world. So check them out. Like literally search up World Economic Forum, Fourth Industrial Revolution. It's talking about blockchain and cryptocurrency climate impact. So that's why you want to stay carbon neutral. If you're into that proof of work shit, you got a battle on your hands that's coming because they're going to target the climate impact of your currency. Smart contracts and automation, blockchain and digital identity, uh, blockchain security and interoperability. Interoperability is one of the biggest things is how these siloed blockchain networks so for example you can't send Bitcoin to an XRP address you can't send Ethereum to an XRP address they're not interoperable yet there are solutions out there for interoperability between these DLT networks you should look at quant network and the XRP interledger they are interoperability so you can move between these different networks without having um, interoperability silos okay gotta throw some more in here if you still don't believe me that this revolution is happening while well, the mainstream media stays silent let me show you a document from the SBI holdings in Japan and the World Economic Forum so SBI refers to these industries as growth industries and the World Economic Forum's Industry Innovation and Infrastructure with Blockchain. So let's hit the World Economic Forum first. So this was from the New York FinTech Week in 2018 with uh, Benjamin Diggles with Constellation Network. And he's talking about right here, number nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. That is what blockchain is. Blockchain is the infrastructure to the, automa the automation of industries worldwide. That's huge. I hope you understand how huge that is. Okay, SBI, if you don't know, SBI Group is a huge financial services giant out in Japan. They're one of the main banks and they're part of this huge consortium. Dig into them because they love XRP. They use XRP as a digital asset. Uh, and look at, but this is, Japan's ahead of the game. If you're from Canada and the US, we are lagging behind because we don't got clarity. We're not using these next generation technologies because we're still waiting for regulatory clarity. Um, and to get, majority of the mass mainstream businesses and citizens involved because everyone's still sleeping all the news talks about is c19 so it's preparing a new fund and it's 100 billion to accelerate investments into growth industries what are these growth industries so fintech ai blockchain the investment focus will include core technologies such as 5G, IoT, big data. And this will advance the realization of Society 5.0 for sustainable development goals and innovative technology and service fields, which will propel Industry 4.0, such as robotics, along with healthcare, medical and nursing care infrastructure, transportation and energy and foods and agriculture. Society 5.0, look at it, remittances, settlement, lending, KYC, AML, blockchain, AI, 5G. We are in the fourth industrial revolution. So here it was, uh, mechanization uh, was the first industry, mass production was two, automation was three, four, we have cloud, IoT, and blockchain, AI, big data all part of the fourth industrial revolution or IR. Okay, so now you know blockchain is a separate industry compared to just cryptocurrencies. Okay, so I hope you understand there's cryptocurrency term and then there's actually blockchain networks, DLT. Okay, so the life cycle of a blockchain transaction, uh, I show a picture of 
And uh, then I, I have a chart here that compares the transaction fees on different blockchains. So before I click the icons, I'm just gonna go over it. Constellation DAG network, it's free for every transaction, it's free. Really awesome network compared to Ethereum, it can run EVM smart contracts. Uh, Algorand, uh, you know, fraction of a cent, regulated team, great team. Uh, XRP, you know, fraction of a cent, takes four seconds to settle a transaction. XDC takes two seconds and fraction of a cent to settle a transaction. Bitcoin, it can go 10 to $50 and it could take up to an hour to four hours. Unscalable with seven transactions per second. Uh, Ethereum, God, you all know, I, you guys all know how bad the Ethereum uh, smart contract transactions are. 30 to $150 plus. I think the highest I had to pay was $200 one time. It was ridiculous, uh, completely unscalable. So just a quick entry here. How does blockchain work? So you go to your exchange, your wallet, you make a trend, you send, you put your address in that you want to send it to. Once you hit that send button, the transaction is added to a block online. The nodes verify that, hey, your transaction is legit. It goes to the next. The block that can be added to the chain provides an incredible and transparent record of transactions. So then it's validated. All the nodes say, hey, your transaction's good to go. So it adds the block, it adds your transaction to the chain. And then that chain is now settled. The money is in the other person's account. There you go. And that's how it works. So here's a comparison chart of showing the, the fees, network scalability between these different networks. Ethereum, 20 transactions per second. Uh, employees, 450. Uh, fees, ridiculous. Hyperledger. Hyperledger, uh, great regulated network. Um, it's a private network. So XDC right here, one of my favorites, runs on uh, delegated proof of stake, and it's got 2,000 transactions per second, fraction of a cent settlement fees. HBAR, also a good network, good team. It's got 10,000 trades per second, fraction of a cent fees. Moving on, so the mainstream media always says cryptocurrencies use too much power, they're junk. Well, they're only talking about the two main ones that are proof of work, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum, but they don't dig deeper. They don't, they don't tell you guys, hey, there's actually a revolution going on and you guys should be looking into this. No, because they, they don't want you guys getting rich off of... Uh, open markets because anyone in the world can open up their computer and buy these decentralized tokens it's just you want to buy ones with utility and not the shitcoin hype pump and dumps ones with utility will succeed over the years the ones with shit coins will die out once the regulations hit so don't let the energy intensive mining ruin your outlook on cryptocurrencies and if you do you haven't done your research because there are many carbon neutral networks that do not use extensive amounts of power so i put this in here because if you are a person who's waiting for the mainstream media to tell you to invest in blockchain well you're going to be entering at the peak of the market when it's time to sell the time to get involved is before the public adoption phase do the opposite of what the mainstream media says and this is my example so Fast money, this was back in 2018 or 2017 when that bull run happened. XRP went up to $3 or whatever. They were telling people that were watching it, buy, buy XRP, $2.57. This was right at the all time highs. And then a couple weeks later, they were showing you how to sell XRP at 71 cents. So if you're, if you're one of the mainstream followers, shut that mainstream crap off and do start doing research yourself because if not you're going to get screwed so a transformation like this only happens once every couple decades we are witnessing the digitalization of many global systems using blockchain technology 
This is me, a citizen of the future, giving you your wake up call to start researching now on how you can participate in the distributed ledger technology revolution. The world systems are being digitalized, guys. And there's enough regulated information out there to show that this is happening. It's just the mainstream media is too busy talking about C-19 and the stuff in the past to even enlighten you that there is a transformation going on. Keep the people in fear so they accept the new change, the new world order of digitalization of money, digitalization of documents, digitalization of many different things. Okay. If you're wondering where to start researching, check out some of the content I created below. And so I just list off a couple things. So this one, I created an ultimate guide, how to safely store your digital assets and your crypto. So once you get, uh, if you're new, that's the one to look at. It explains the differences between a ledger, a ledger nano S, a ledger nano X and a decent wallet, which ones I think are the best options. Um, this right here, if you're buying XDC, if you're buying HBAR, Decent Wallet has those tokens. Ledger doesn't. I highly recommend uh, Decent. Uh, they're great. And if you use these two links in here, you save $50 on one Decent Wallet and $129 on a two-pack. And it's it's Bluetooth, mobile friendly. It's got a fingerprint scanner. Uh, it's a really awesome cold storage wallet. Highly recommend you look into it. It's way better than Ledger now because I've been finding that Ledger has had a lot of battery issues and a lot of bad customer support. So right here, uh, in here, there's a list of my favorite utility blockchain networks. Uh, I just put a list here. I'll open it up for you guys so you can just see. And then it just gives you uh, some, some ones that you can safely do the research in and feel like you're on a good path because it will lead somewhere. Uh, this is just showing that, you know, don't fall for the shitcoin hype, hump, uh, not hump and dump, uh, hype and pump and dumps. Um, because smart money will leave you hanging with worthless bags in the end. And if you're investing, make sure the majority of your money is in utility networks that have regulated partnerships that are working with traditional finance in some way. Because one day when regulations come in, they're going to regulate centralized exchanges. So the only way to get crypto in and out is through a regulated centralized exchange. And all these shit exchanges that are literally no name uh, are going to shut down because they won't be able to meet the regulatory requirements to run an exchange. So you got to make, make sure when you're doing research that they have ties with traditional finance and they can bridge into the, the new regulated system that's being built. So XDC is a good one. There's some good right up here. I've got, also got some videos on my channel that you can check out that, that break it down really awesome. Uh, XRP too. And yeah, so <sighs> I hope some of this gives you some clarity between what is crypto... And what is blockchain technology? That's what I wanted to leave you guys with is a bunch of good information that I found and explain it so you can feel and know that, hey, just because you don't see this in the news, in the mainstream media news, doesn't mean it's not happening. And just to get you guys set up because um, there's so much happening. There's so much information. And there's just not enough time <laughs> to, 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 to process it all and to, to get people involved. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked something, if you got something out of this, like, comment, leave feedback. If you didn't like something about it, give me some constructive criticism on how to improve. And if you think I missed something, leave a comment. Let me know. I like, I like conversations, but uh, yeah, so cheers everyone. I hope this helped. Citizen of the future out. Until next time.